Nate, let's go, Nate. I mean, what are you doing, man? We don't walk here. Golly. I got him, though, you guys. He's just going to the hardest. Coach, do you want to start with opening statement? Open up questions. questions. We'll go to questions. James, how's that running back group coming along early, particularly those two freshmen in the Catron and Nick? Yeah, obviously we got a pretty good feel who the, who the vets are. Um, we need them and expect them to take a step this year. The two freshmen have been have been impressive, you know, really since they've they've showed up on campus. Uh, Katron is very football smart. Um, I think his experience at IMG um, has put him ahead in terms of um, just college level learning uh, and experience and understanding defense and protections and things like that. Uh, and then Nick, as you, as you guys have seen some in, in the weightlifting sessions and some of the announcements on social media, he's been pretty impressive. He's, he's got tremendous burst, um, powerful, strong, and pass protection. So uh, been, we've been impressed so far. And I think, you know, to be honest with you, I think our O-line and tight ends are, are doing a really nice job. So you're able to see them a little bit more right now. So been some good things. Which offensive linemen have you been happy with so far, and how are your numbers with that group? I know when you read off the list, it, yeah, our, yeah, yeah, our numbers are real, are real low. Um, so you know, this this happens from time to time. We had a bunch of guys um, that have kind of moved on, um, so our numbers are low. We we have answers for training camp, but right now there's not a whole lot of answers. Even when we do our run on tryout. Um, typically, you can get most positions except for O-line. Just not a whole lot of those human beings walking around the planet, less, let alone on Penn State's campus. Um, so we're, we're, we're light there. But, uh, you know, I think Olu has been really good. Uh, he's been really impressive. Uh, Juice has been really impressive. It looks comfortable. I think his best position is that center. Uh, and then Caden you know, staying at right tackle. But there's flexibility with Caden at left tackle as well. Um, those guys are probably the guys that we feel the best about right now. But that doesn't mean we're not pleased with other guys, but there's probably still more of a competition um, you know, at the other positions for, for right now. James, what have you seen from Mitchell Tinsley now that you've been able to get him out on the field, and how is he fitting in overall, you know, football-wise and you know, socially, all those other things? Yeah, I think he's a great fit. I think that's one of the things that we've, we've done a pretty good job of, of, of getting the right guys. Um, you know, out of the transfer portal, so I think that's been good. Um, he's what you'd expect with a guy that's played as much football uh, as he has. Um, he's polished. Um, he's poised. He's got really good ball skills. He knows how to run routes. Um, I think it's been really good for him from a testing perspective to be able to see the guys he's competing against, what they run, what they jump, all those types of things to kind of test Kind of his some of his explosive numbers and and where he may want to improve, um, but overall good. What what you'd expect out of a guy with as much production as he's had, uh, and just an older vet. He's picked up the offense you know, pretty well, um, but the rest of spring and summer will be will be really important for him. And I think there'll be a really good competition you know for those for those wide receiver spots. James Juice looks almost like a different football player this spring compared to last year with the added weight. Is part of that transition to center the conversation around his weight with more nose tackles that you've seen recently, or is it just a natural progression of an athlete in this position? Yeah, to be honest, I'd have to check the numbers to, to us. Now, we see him every day. You guys don't see him as often. Um, he was up 12 pounds on your roster. From last spring or from the fall? From last year's roster, the last one. Week. From the fall? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be interested in what it was in the spring. I'm not sure, but I, I would say that's probably natural progression. I mean, I would say typically with those old linemen, it's about 10 pounds. I think they have a huge spike their first year on campus, typically around 25 pounds, and then it kind of goes 10 after that. So I think that's more just natural evolution of being here in, in the program. Um, but it's not like it was something that we've emphasized or, or anything like that, if, that, if that's your question. Sorry, no, you're good. Pretty sure. How are things going with uh, Manny, kind of getting the um, hands-on work with the players here this sort of spring? Good. You know, um, you know, obviously there there are some changes, and, and with that, there's some there's some growing pains and guys not playing as fast as they normally do because they're thinking a little bit more with some of the adjustments that have been made. Um, but overall, good. You know, obviously he's got tremendous experience, um, both as a head coach and as a defensive coordinator. Uh, but I've been I've been really impressed with him, and um, I think he's been really good with the staff and, and with the guys as well. So um, I think he's got some wrinkles that I think will be really good for us. 
um, some subtle adjustments that, that I'm excited about, but, but good so far, but there's still a lot of work to be done. I'll have a better feel probably with him being year one and where we're at probably about two weeks into training camp. Um, this, this spring will be really important to lay a foundation, build on it all summer, do a great job with voiceovers and things like that, and then, and then hopefully be able to come into camp in the first two weeks and, and really be flying around and truly competing. Is it terminology? Or what's what's the difference between because you said structurally they're very similar. To yeah, defenses. it's a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit of, of term terminology, and it's a little bit of, of philosophy um, and just how we want our linebackers to play, how we're going to fit up pullers, um, you know, things like that that are just a little bit different. When you got a guy like Nick Tarburton has been playing a way a certain way how he takes on pullers, and now we're doing a little bit different, um, or where it's Brent and how they fitted runs. It's a little bit different for the linebackers, and when you've been doing something for two, three years, some of the guys like Sutherland, Sutherland's been here nine years at Penn State, so <laughs> it's, a, it's a fairly good adjustment for him. How do you balance the perception of how you think a guy might play in the spring versus how he ends up playing? How, how does a guy sort of buck your assumption going into spring? Maybe Say that one more time. I'm how sorry. does a guy play better than you might think that he does? Like somebody farther down the depth chart, you go, he is probably going to end up here, but then he has a spring that's maybe better than you thought. How does that kind of guy stick out to you? Yeah, I think it's 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 kind of what you're saying. He, he sticks out, you know. So whether it's whether it's a guy that makes significant jumps in the weight room and their numbers bring attention to them, um, whether it's guys out here on the field, like I think Zach Key's an example. Um, you know, he did some really nice things for us at corner. We felt like safety would probably be his best long-term uh, position but starting him at corner and the confidence that comes from kind of being out there on the island we think is valuable um, and right now he just seems to find the football the ball likes him he likes the football um, and he's kind of standing out right now uh, Zane Durant is is flashing uh, at a position that's usually hard to flash at as a freshman at defensive tackle He's just strong and explosive. He's got great lateral movement. So, you know, it, it, it shouldn't be that hard, right? It's the guys that there's a buzz about from the players and the coaches. They just kind of keep jumping out, uh, making plays physically, but also they're able to keep up with it mentally. Because um, some guys, I think, physically may be able to help us right now, but they're behind mentally, and they're going to need this spring and this summer to give themselves a chance. And then there's some other guys that physically are just behind. One of the things I think we're doing a better job of, which I think I've mentioned to you guys before, is, and I'm ashamed to say it, but taking advantage of the Zooms now. So, like, the guys at home, like Denai, you know, Denai's not able to be here right now, but we're able to meet with him. Um, so now he's got a chance mentally to be as far along as these guys are, and now it's just the physical aspect. So. I think we got more guys in this class than we probably had, you know, that I think can play as, as freshmen. James, and, and we'll see how that plays out. Sorry about that. James, uh, with the McDonough presence here already in place, how does that maybe help deny for his arrival with the, the, the resources he has from that program? Yeah, I think it helps a little bit because he's got some big brothers that, that you know, he can ask questions to, they can talk to, they can come up on the weekend and stay with and things like that. So. I think it helps a little bit, but I think it really depends on the older guys and how much they take them under their wing, if that makes sense. Um, obviously, PJ's played a lot of football here. Uh, similar positions, not same position, but similar position, so so that will be helpful too. You Two mentioned Zaki a couple of seconds ago, but um, what have you seen kind of with Jalen Reed and his, his transition, his development? Uh, how much more comfortable do you think he looks now compared to what we saw last year? Yeah, you know, so obviously there's a difference there, right? Uh, you know, Jalen played as a, as a true freshman. Zach Key, we ended up redshirting. Um, you know, but I think right now, if you, if you talk to Coach Poindexter and, and Manny, I think we got four safeties that we think we're going to have a chance um, to play with, you know, in, in the fall, which is, which is good to feel that way right now. And then, and then obviously we got to get to a point where you have at least five, hopefully six, um, you know, and those guys playing on special teams and, and gaining some confidence and experience with the guys that we coming in. So we'll, we'll see how that plays out. But, but both both Jalen and Zachy are doing some really good things. Jalen obviously has got more game experience, but Zachy's showing up a bunch right now in practice. James, how have you seen Curtis Jacobs grow as a leader now that he's sort of the veteran of the starters? 
Yeah, I think that's that's an area that um, you know right now with him learning, you know, kind of his new role and the subtle adjustments on, on the defense. Um, I wouldn't say that that's you know a priority for him or for us right now at this stage. It's going to have to be, um, but right now um, I think he's he's still kind of feeling his way through that. Um, but we're going to need that in the fall. That's something I've talked to the coaches a lot about. Is is you know we've had some strong presences leave Jesse Lucchetta and Ellis Brooks. Those guys that not only were they experienced players, but they were very vocal players from a leadership standpoint. So. You know, I, what I don't want to do is sit here in the fall and talk about how we're behind uh, from a leadership stand from a leadership standpoint. Um, you know, you, you see that where coaches will say, "Oh, well, you know, we're just we're not in a really good place from a leadership standpoint. Our leadership wasn't very good." Um, you know, we got to develop that. You know, we, we got to understand we've lost some significant guys uh, from an experience from a leadership standpoint. We got to develop who those leaders are. Um, I think Tig and right Tig and Sean um, have been have been really good from that perspective so far. Tig, I've seen a probably the biggest difference of all the guys in our program has probably been Tig. Thanks, coach. Thanks, guys. Thank Thanks. You.